Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for Back to Classroom, where today we are talking about Google Sites as a class website. Now this is a whole workshop in and of itself is how do you use Google Sites to be a class website. So what we are focusing on specifically in this session is how we do a shortcut for quickly adding docs, sheets, slides, and forms. So I would like to encourage you to share anything on the hashtag back to classroom on Twitter or Instagram. And if you would please join us at backtoclassroom.org. Backtoclassroom.org is a Facebook group for you to join. And there we are giving tips on how to use Google Classroom, how are we gonna get back into using Google Classroom with our students effectively, and what tools integrate well with Google Classroom. So some of my favorites are Schoolytics, Screencastify, and Moat. I use all three of these like every day. They really enhance and make my Google Classroom better. So go to schoolytics.io, screencastify.com, and moat.com. I'm gonna go ahead and put those into the chat. Schoolytics.io, those are going. And then screencastify.com. And then moat.com. Now these are of course not the only great tools that integrate in with Google Classroom. So if you'll join us at backtoclassroom.org, we're gonna be talking Google Classroom and what works well with Google Classroom to really help you to get back into it. Okay, so what we are looking at today is Google Sites. Google Sites is a website. So why would we have a Google Sites if we're using Google Classroom? Well, Google Sites is public facing. This is where parents can know what's going on in the class. A Google Site is how you can organize all of your information, whereas you're a little more restricted in a Google Classroom. Google Classroom is students only. So how do parents know what's going on in the class? What announcements do you have? So I actually use a Google Site as my class website, and I want students to start on the Google Site so I can with pictures and graphics and embedding documents and different things that I can put that onto the Google site. They can see all of that and then I'm able to easily link to Google Classroom. So my landing place is I want them to first every day start off at the site and then link over to Google Classroom because that's where they're gonna submit their work. So here's a fun tip. If you are looking at the classwork page of Google Classroom, so you're looking at the classwork page of Google Classroom. You're gonna copy that link up at the top. Now I use Control L, is highlight the URL, Control L, highlight the URL, Control C, copy. Control L, highlight the URL, Control C, copy. So I'm copying that link to the classwork page and I'm putting it on to my Google site. So when they click on it, it takes them right to the classwork page. So it's a quick and easy way to get them right to, I always have a topic called today. What are we doing today? And I have those assignments right there in the today topic. So I think it's really important to have a Google site or some sort of a class website to communicate beyond how we can communicate with Google Classroom. So what I'm gonna show you today is what we're looking for specifically is this less than, greater than. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that in a minute. But this is what I want you to focus on. This is how easy it is to add things to a Google site. You can use this less than, greater than to embed right in there. So what I have in another tab is I have gone to sites.google.com. And on sites.google.com, it shows all of my Google sites. I have a one called delete that I'm just gonna use here as a sample. If you wanna make a new Google site, all you have to do is do sites.new. Sites.new will make a brand new Google site for you. And here's the best part about Google Sites, it saves to your Google Drive. I love that. Why do I use a Google site, not a WordPress, or I use WordPress for my regular website, alicekeeler.com. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the chat. AliceKeeler.com. And if you have any questions, please feel free to add them to the chat, depending on which platform you are joining with. Um, if you go to AliceKeeler.com, that is a WordPress. So I'm very 
very well um, versed in how to use that. I actually prefer using Google Sites because it saves to my Google Drive because I can easily add my classroom resources right on here. So one of the things that I want to do is I want to take a new slide. So I'm going to do slides.new. I'm just going to say, here we go, 2021. 2021, 2022, slide, oh, excuse me, agenda healer, right? So these are going to be my agenda slides. And I'm going to put this in the first spot. And so this is Monday. And so these are my Monday agenda. What are we doing today? I'm going to go ahead and change the background on that just so it's a little more obvious. And if anyone knows me, I'm always going to put my Bitmoji. So I'm going to add my Bitmoji on there. What are we doing today? And this way students and parents can see what is the agenda, what are the directions, what are we doing today? Now over here in the Google site, on the Google site, all I have to do is double click and you see this wheel comes up. So this is the insert wheel and I can just insert text. That's that middle part. I can change it to being a heading and I can change the font if I want. And I can come over here to this artist palette and change the emphasis, all kinds of great options, right? So that when I double click, just right there in the middle, I choose text. It's real easy to add text to my Google site. But what I want to do is I want to add this agenda slides. I want to add the agenda slides. So I'm going to come back over here to the agenda slides and I'm going to copy control L. I'm going to highlight that URL at the top of the slides and control C copy. So I'm going to copy that link and come right back here into the site, double click. Now instead of adding text, I'm not going to add text. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to choose this less than, greater than, the embed icon. So let's go back to my slides, let's take a look at it. This is what I'm looking for on that wheel. So when I double click, I get this less than, greater than. And I come right over here, I'm gonna select that. And it looks like I'm embedding from the internet and I'm like, I don't know that I'm embedding anything. This actually just works for your Google Docs, your Google Sheets, your Google Slides, your Google Forms. It works for all of these. If you just paste the link, you can insert that in there. So look at that, just super quick and easy. I now have a Google Slides. I can make it bigger and it embeds that Google Slides right in there. Now, uh, the other way to do it is I can go to the insert menu over here on the right side. I can scroll down and come to slides on the menu on the side. And then comes the fun part of finding those slides where it's getting it from Drive. Notice I'm waiting it for it to load. I'm gonna have to look up where it is and select it so that it inserts in there. It's not like it's so bad. It's pretty easy, it's right here. Well, these are the slides that I'm doing right now. Just stick those in there. Select here and stick in the agenda. I can put in Google Slides all day long. It's pretty easy. Now here's the thing that you wanna make sure that you remember. When you add documents to Google Sites, unlike Google Classroom, in Google Classroom, when I add anything to Google Classroom, it automatically makes it shareable with the students. That is not true with Google Sites. So you will need to make sure that you change the sharing permissions. Now I do have a Chrome extension. It is anyone can view Chrome extension. Let's go ahead and open that up. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the chat. I did a search for anyone can view is one line. This collects no user information. It's totally safe to use. And so what you can do with this Chrome extension, you'll notice that right now the on the share button on these slides that they are private. It has the little padlock on it, they're private. If I just click this icon, watch the icon, the permission is changed to anyone with the link can view. So you notice now that the icon is changed, but even better, it copied the link to my clipboard. So if you're just looking at your Google Doc, your Google Slides, your Google Sheets, it does not work with Forms or Jamboard, sorry about that. This add-on only works with Doc Sheets and Slides. And you click the Chrome extension, anyone can view. Again, this is what it is, the anyone can view Chrome extension. What that's gonna do is change your sharing permissions and copy the link 
to the clipboard. So then all you have to do is back in your Google site is you double click, you just double click, the insert wheel comes up and then you're gonna head and click on the embed. So you're gonna click on that less than, greater than. I'm gonna link to my slides and you can see that I can embed that Google Slides for my agenda really easily. So I like to do this where I have an agenda slides. I do not make a new agenda slides every day. I keep reusing the same one. You do need to make sure that you click publish. And if you're gonna share the link, you actually wanna click on this link up in the toolbar. So you see the fourth icon that is a link icon and paste. So this is the publish view. I went to a new tab and I linked. This is what you share with parents and students is the publish view. So we'll just scroll down here. All right, so you can see that my slides are embedded right in there. There's my slides. I'm gonna come back to my slides. I'm gonna add a new slide because it's Tuesday, right? So I'm gonna say Tuesday. And this is what we are doing today. And I'm gonna add my Bitmoji because I'm still Alice today. Put my Bitmoji on everything. All right, cool. And just for fun, I'm gonna change the background color. Background, change the color. Then, now it's important that I drag this up to the first position. I want them to go in reverse so the newest one is always at the top and yesterday is always number two. So I want them to go in reverse order. You could scroll through them and see what we've been doing since the beginning of the year. But in particular, the newest one is always at the top. So let's go over to the website and I'm gonna refresh. So I'm refreshing my Google site. So the same link, I give that link to the parents. Here's the link to our class website. And you'll see when I refreshed, it now shows Tuesday. All right, so let's go ahead and add a Wednesday slide. I'm gonna go ahead and add a slide. I'm gonna say oops, Wednesday and put my Bitmoji on it. Okay, and let's change the color of the layout. Okay, I'll make it peach. And I need to, again, drag that up to the first position. So when I refresh the Google site website, it's going to automatically show the most current agenda of the Google slides. But the parents can then, or the students, can then advance the slides and see Monday, Tuesday, today's Wednesday. They can go right through all of them. So that makes it really nice because your website can stay updated when you embed Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. So I'm gonna come back over here. This is the edit screen. How do I find this? It's in my Google Drive. So I literally, I just go to drive.google.com, go to Google Drive, and you click here on the filter icon, filter icon, and what type, and you'll see that it says sites. So when you go to type, you're gonna filter for sites, and it's gonna show you all your Google Sites Websites, push enter, come on. These are all my Google Sites websites. So it makes it really easy to find it, unlike my WordPress or other things. I know how to find my Google Sites that I have my class website on. So I can put announcements, I can make buttons, and it really makes it a really nice interface where I have control over what I do with my Google Site. I don't really have as much control over the way that my Google Classroom looks. And again, Parents don't have access to that. So this gives me something where I can communicate to my administrators, to my parents, and to my students of what's going on in my class. I'm gonna go ahead and get a Google form. I'm gonna go forms.google.com. I can create a new form. Or I'm just gonna go ahead and have a sample form. I'm gonna click on the preview. So I'm looking at the Google form, how it would look when students fill it out. I'm going to control L, highlight the URL, control C, copy, just copying the link to that Google form. And then back here on my Google site, I'm just going to double click. I'm going to use this less than greater than and paste. And you see it's going to put the Google form 
right into my Google Sites website. Now you might want to make it wider and make it longer so it whoops, so it fits the whole thing. Well, I lost my page. Where did it go? Here we go. Sorry about that. Right? So you might want to make it longer. Just drag it down, make it wider. Don't forget to click publish. If you don't click publish after you make edits, they are not visible. So you want to make sure you do that every time you update it. But what's nice about this, though, is if you do embed the Google Slides with the daily agenda, if you do embed the Google Slides with the daily agenda, refreshing. There we go. Show on Wednesday. I don't need to update my site. I can just update my slides and update anything that I have embedded, my Google Docs, my Google Sheets, my forms. If I update those, they will automatically be updated on my Google Sites website. Okay. Great. Well, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining me. Just a reminder that we're using this less than, greater than. When you double click, it allows you to really easily add elements into your Google site. All right, so if you would join back to classroom.org, you might need to do the www back to classroom.org. If you would join that, please. And this is where I can answer questions and we can continue the conversation and share other tips for using Google Classroom along with Schoolytics, Screencastify, Moat, and other great products that really amplify and make you even better at teaching with Google Classroom. So thank you for joining. Please use the hashtag back to classroom as you share more about this. Bye, thank you.